They've built 56 of these boats. Numerous boats have gone around the world, and there are a couple that have gone around not once, but twice. Whoever ends up with this boat is going to be a happy camper. Hi there, this is Captain Q and my old sailing buddy, Randy. Join us as we travel hither and yon as we look for some great deals on classic boats and learn a little with each one. I recognize the suspenders. Hey, Randy. How are you? Good, how are you? I'm fine. Today we've got a Robert Perry design. Robert's one of the more prolific uh, naval architects the country has known. And I think he's got something like, oh, well over a hundred designs to his credit. Um, a lot of them built over in Taiwan. Uh, the one we're going to see today is uh, from the Chung Hua uh, uh, yard. Uh, this particular boat is a 1986 Lafitte. And uh, uh, it was commissioned uh, by uh, a group of men who wanted to build a really super boat. And they went to Perry and they said, what can you design for us? And they took out, he took out a fresh piece of paper and uh, off they went to it, you know. And they've produced 56 of these. And I think, I've forgotten how many, but many of them, many, many, many of them have gone around the world. So for those of you out there who want to go around the world, um, this is a boat for you to look at. She's a heavy seagoing boat, uh, weighs about 28,000 pounds, I think, and uh, lots of ballast. She's very deep, as you're going to see. And that's what Perry designs. He, and he designs them for speed, too. So he likes fast cruising boats but seaworthy boats, really seaworthy boats. What do you say, we meander over here yeah, and take a look at this it? one. Oh, I think Sea Dog has already found it. What's the first thing that pops into your eyeball? Ah, uh, the stern, yeah, it's very yeah. different. She's got the sort of canoe stern. This gives you a little more volume inside the boat by coming back like so and not just having a long counter going out, uh, which is pretty, uh, but this gives you volume and maybe a little more buoyancy aft because you've got all this area in here. Uh, a, a split rudder keel system, a pretty massive skag right here, all molded in part of the the, uh, the hull. Uh, this is he's, he's again taken pains to make the hull fast and to the extent where he's buried this zinc. I think that's pretty cool. That, we've never yeah. seen that before, actually. Yeah. Flush mount, uh, yeah. countersunk. But having done that, he's gone ahead with this particular boat and just given him a two-bladed prop. And you can line these props up and at least get it in line with the mass of the keel. You'll see that there's been a number of things added to it on the list, and when you go through the whole list of the inventory in the boat, you will be dazzled by it. Yeah, do they say how much has been spent on it? Uh, over a quarter of a million dollars. Wow, we've got this kind of... I don't know what you call that in the bottom, like a shoe or something? But I did just a tiny bit of research, and I found out that, uh, according to Mr. Perry himself, that's the way they they built the boat originally. Just another stabilizing factor, rather than carrying the lead really a long way back and having a, a, a distribution issue in terms of the ballast itself, he wanted to end it here. He didn't want any more lead going further aft because it might affect the boat trim. The paint job on the boat looks good on this particular boat. Uh, it's pretty smooth, and I think it's probably been been uh, blasted not terribly long ago. Look at the depth of the of the uh, bow up here. Look how deep this is. Uh, this is just about as deep as of anything we've seen right now. So she's really going to have a nice motion in a sea. Here's another sea strainer, a water intake sea strainer. Yep. And I know the boat has. Uh, air conditioning and heating reverse cycle on that. So I'm imagining that this is probably an intake for that system up in the bow. Otherwise, but, it was, if it was for an engine intake, it would be a little bit more midship? Uh, well, yeah, the, the engine uh, intake is back here. There's, uh, well, now I'm gonna stand corrected here. I'm not certain what this one is for. And there's there are two more back here. Oh, wow. There's one here and one here. Now, I know that the engine's right above this piece. Now, sometimes when you have AC uh, heaters and uh, reverse cycle systems, they'll have two different units. One thing that's nice here about this boat, they've molded in the, the boot top waterline right. right here. See this little black, looks like a black paint? Both the 
bootstripe and this piece down here are molded into the glass. So you'll always have a straight, <laughs> straight line there. I know you thought this might be a very large paddle wheel. <laughs> Actually, I've got a paddle wheel right beside it over on this side, but this is for your uh, forward looking sonar radar uh, type of system that they've got on the boats. This is a lot of boats. This is a, a very large 44 foot boat. What do you say we go aboard? Yeah. Randy, come on board, buddy. Thanks. Once again, you find me at one of my favorite spots here, right? Aft cockpit, flush deck boat uh, with a very low cabin trunk, you'll see, and two, two companion ways, one from this cockpit and one amidships. The seating is not as long as some as we've seen, and you could still curl up on these and, and on the leeward side. I do like the depth of the combing. Look at uh, Sea Dog's right in the way of this. You can see even Sea Dog wouldn't fall off of this thing. Uh, that's, pre that's pretty deep. And it gives you a good place to kneel against when you're cranking these big uh, Lumar 55 winches. There's a little bridge deck between the two fore and aft seats. And there are lockers at the end of each one which will give you a place to store extra dock lines. In this case, a little baby locker. It is sort of a baby locker, you're right. And on the other side, in case uh, your boat should catch fire, uh, they've kept a fire extinguisher here. Right beside me, we have the Lafitte version of a garage. And uh, it's been soundproofed. And we can't really see much in here because it's really covered, filled with sails and electronic gear, but everything is very neat. Again, remember the boat's 35 years old. Look at the hosing, uh, look at the bulkheads, and just things are clean. Nothing's really coated with green slime or mildew or anything, and there's no animals in there. We don't need to get to them, but there's two circular hatches here, and that's for your two propane tanks. Look at the size and the strength of this push pit here. Pretty major. Comes complete with uh, fittings for your yacht ensign, and they've got a, an anchor lashed up here. Outside of that, you see what, what I think is one of the classic, one of the better uh, man overboard poles. When somebody goes overboard, you drop that over the side and it will uh, float very high, about eight feet out of the water and has a flag on it. And everybody can spot that. Hanging off the transom here is a uh, German uh, Wind Pilot Pacific steering vane that will help steer the boat uh, anywhere you want to go without touching the wheel, no electronics. Above here, uh, we have a wind generator. That particular one is an, a, an eclectic energy D400 wind generator. And it was put on just two years ago. It'll put out 600 watts. I'm down in the, the lower side of this cockpit and I like this. This is pretty nice. You can see your sails. Uh, you can get a pretty good eye over the other side of the boat as well. Uh, what else you see here, Randy, we like? Single control, a little single, they call used to call Morse controls. And this is uh, all, this does everything with one handle. This little piece right here is what is part of the control line system for the wind pilot behind me, okay, on the stern. These two lines will come and control, and as, a, as the servo pendulum tilts one way or the other, it's gonna tug on these one way or the other, and it will steer the boat. We have the latest electronics array from, in this case, Brooks and Gatehouse. You can have radar, GPS, everything repeated. Uh, engine controls are right down here underneath a glass door. See, this piece, so, you can actually open this right here. They've got all your sail controls coming back uh, to self-tailing winches. So for reefing, uh, trimming the main, it's all gonna be done from inside here. And of course you have the, the array of Brooks and Gatehouse gauges up here for apparent wind, depth, and speed. Let's take a, a little walk forward on the deck. We love the subscribers. Yeah, more subscribers means that we're going to get recommended to more people, and so that helps spread the love and spread the word about old classic boats and what we're doing, so every little bit helps. Thanks again. This is a really nice Dodge arrangement. As we come forward, you see the uh, travel adjustments here, which are led through the Dodger uh, back to one of their own winches. So you can adjust and trim this main pretty well. And here are the main sheets coming down here. We have a second companionway right here, and that's gonna go down uh, midships to the, uh, about the galley nav area of the boat. This is pure PB right here. <laughs> she came with the same 
teak deck laid, all fastened from above, and then bungs were driven in over the top of the screw heads. Now, the, the meat in the teak has been scrubbed out. This is a perfect example of it, you see? So you're just left with the hard, the hard part of the teak sticking up. The screws start to show up or they start to push out the bungs. You probably got a couple more years, maybe two to three more years uh, before you have to do something, before those bungs really start popping. This is a solar panel. Is it screwed actually, down? It's screwed down, oh. all fastened down, and it actually has a kind of a non-skid component to it. And this will put out 750 watts wow. of power. Here's the, uh, the boat's uh, in semi-inflatable. This is not a hard bottom, not a rigid bottom. This is just an all-inflated bottom. I haven't quite seen one like this. Behind this, under cover here, is a nicely covered uh, I think it's a Viking eight-man life raft. Up forward here, we've got a, a couple nice rollers for anchors at the bow. I like the double construction on the uh, lifeline extensions into the pulpit. There's a windlass on here and it's stored beneath a locker. They've got Norseman fittings on all the uh, shrouds here. These are things you assemble the end of the, the cable onto a cone and then you screw this piece down and it compresses it right onto uh, the wire. She has a double spreader rig and forward and aft lowers. And we also see a set of running backstays here on each side of the boat down here. You see the, the uh, four part block and uh, the Dyneema lines that are, are hankered to that. Yeah, what do you think of the Dyneema? But I understand it, it, it's stronger than steel, which is hard to imagine, but uh, it has one flaw in that apparently it can catch on things. Chafing, you mean? Chafing, thank you. Yeah. You could actually, uh, it, you could chafe the line. It's one of the drawbacks to it. One other problem, I think, sometimes with this, they've gone to smaller diameter lines on these. Um, and in many cases in retrofits, the, the diameter of the Dyneema, which is adequate to the strength required, makes for a smaller line that sometimes doesn't fit around winches and through the jaws for the self-tailers. This is the spinnaker pole or reaching pole for the boat. And the length in this pole uh, is the same length as the J dimension on the boat. J dimension being that me measured from the forward part of the mast up to the uh, head stay. The uh, little short track here for a staysail, and there is a staysail rig uh, tang right up underneath that bow forward. All right, what do you say we go below? Yeah, let's do it. Yeah. I'm down below here. Come on down. See an interesting little cabin here. Right. Now, uh, I'm sort of down here around the corner. You won't see me right away, huh? Do you see me? I want you to notice, what's the one thing you see right away? The nice Captain Q mirror. Yes, exactly. Look at that. Is that a beauty or not? Oh, there's the cabin. We've got a nice settee on the starboard side of this. I'm going to call this the owner's cabin because it really is the owner's cabin. And there's um, storage everywhere. There are drawers underneath everywhere. Uh, the mirrored door here will take you to the head. We have here access to a hanging ladder, locker. Oh, wow. A lot of your Victron Energy systems, right? Yeah, your battery management, sure. Battery management. You know about this stuff, don't you? A little bit. We have a little handle. That's going to just pop right up and twist slightly. And there we have our Perkins uh, engine. Oh. How do you like that? And you know what? We also have access to it from the little door up here. And there are more spaces that come in around on either side. Hey. Uh, just popped into this, this, this bed. This is the award winner. We've seen no bigger quarter berth uh, on a boat. It's like three quarters berth. It's, this is like four quarters. The controls are right behind here for your heating system and uh, some other electronic gear. And there's an electric fan there to keep a little breeze going. And we've got storage. Always good storage. I really like this though. Could we, we might have to end this segment right we'll now. We have to could take we, a break. Could we do this? <laughs> okay, I'll get out. I, I can hear you. I, um, I, tell me about this uh, veneer. I ha I'm dealing with a little bit of that too. Well, it is what it is. It's veneer. Veneer is just more than one piece of very thin wood glued to another piece and the moisture can get down in the rough edges of that and slide down and, and stain it. It is repairable uh, and certainly utilitarian once you're done. They've got handholds and 
that's really handy. Just that one handhold allow you to pop in and out of your bunk. So this is a very small but compact and private stateroom for the owner. And you have its own companionway, the own light and air coming into it. And if there's other crew, they can go down the midship's companionway, which you'll see behind you. Now as I leave the owner's cabin, I come through the head. Now this is fine. This gives the owner privacy, his own head. You see, we can shut this out of here. Yep. Uh, we've got hot and cold running water. We have the storage lockers. Uh, we have a separate shower uh, handle right here, which is unusual. Nice big handle on the pumper. The only problem with this is, well, first of all, you know what they've done here. Yeah, thwart ships. It's thwart ships. But if you get thrown off of this head with a big wave, you're only going to hit the bulkhead about two feet away from you. Uh, but the only other problem here is if somebody is coming down from the cockpit, let's say you're underway and they want to get to the galley or the nav station, you don't really want them walking through the cabin, do you? Not really. So we do have a separate companionway for them, and uh, we'll ask them to use that companionway whenever possible. After you're finished uh, with the head, you can come out here and do a little navigating. First of all, he's put a nice grab bar in here. So you hang under the bar, you drop down your knees, and you slide in. And you actually, these, these are like the bolsters in your sports car. This guy's going to get an award. Oh, yeah? Yeah, check this out. <gasps> Whoa. Look at that. Look at that. That's fantastic. So here we have a battery test right here. Just flip that up, and you'll see that pops right up to, oh, 13 plus. That's one bank. Here's another bank on the same switch. And then there's a third battery uh, right here. Yep. So he's got single sideband up here and a VHF with uh, AIS on it down here. Uh, and this is kind of clever too. This is, sometimes we like the little things we find on boats. Here's a drink holder. It just happens to be bolted to, the, uh, uh, to this grab rail. Nice nav station. We like it a lot. And right across from this, if you get tired of navigating, you can pull yourself out and step a couple steps over here to a big U-shaped galley. I think you can understand the massive amounts of counter space that are back here and, and, and even counter space that's not interrupted by lockers. Easy sliding set of drawers for silver and everything right underneath them. And we've got very large uh, refrigeration systems and so forth. And up here we have uh, a microwave. Now, I didn't realize it, I didn't, never thought about it back in the day, but those can run off an inverter if you have nothing else on the boat but an inverter. And a microwave is a really handy thing to have for a quick meal or a warm up your cup of coffee. Uh, it's got a little bit of a, an anchor band here with a carabiner on it. This is going to keep you in to the galley, right? This will come over and, and snap on over here. That'll really keep you in. And that will keep you right in there, exactly. Here's a four burner propane stove, and I think this was installed recently, and you've got uh, lots of locker storage space for everything you possibly could use. Oh, looks like this guy's ready for a party. What do you think? More award-winning sinks. Deep, close to center line. The, the ancillary separate uh, water supply pumps, foot-operated pumps. And these two pieces right here, I believe, are vents for his water tanks. Oh, interesting. And, yeah, what happens is that rather than having a water tank vented over the side... Or into the bilge. Or into the bilge or something, when you fill up the water tank, when it fills up, it'll just it'll vent itself through here. Here we have a, uh, a trash holder, and the, the trash holder has been removed right now for the, for the season, but, uh, and also access to some additional wiring and plumbing down there. I've moved into the main saloon, and boy, I tell you, there's a couple steps down. Right now I'm looking at you, and you've got, oh, you must have almost seven feet of headroom over you. Oh yeah. Pretty it's close to yeah, it, probably. and down here, there is equal amounts. This is a very cozy, uh, main saloon down here. The uh, all the woodwork is, is has that uh, satin finish varnish on it, and all the lockers are set up with uh, ventilation in them. I'd like to see a little more shelving in some of these, but that could be added. Not a big deal. Now, uh, in preparation to get this boat going, wherever he's going with it, uh, the owner uh, pulled all the uh, chain plates off and had them electro-polished and also uh, tested for cracks. To further strengthen the whole rig, heavy glass uh, matting has been, and uh, uh, cloth has been put inside all these lockers around the 
uh, chain plate areas on both port and starboard side of the boat. They've got a, a filler piece of wood right here underneath that will come out and sit right where I'm standing and you've got another huge double berth. Big table wings here on either side to come out and allow you to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight people could sit around this table both sides. Neat little storage bin inside the table and uh, people often put their uh, various liquors in there. Sea Dog so likes to go to the starboard side and I'm just gonna have a little seat right here and this is very comfortable. It, you know, all these things on these boats are, but again, I, I look over and see this nice trim and these little slide-in lockers. The cabin sole is a, a teak and holly uh, combination and it's uh, left uh, with a soft varnish on it and not a high gloss, which is a little safer this way. Again, giant headroom in this boat. Well, you know, what's that, another four inches on top of? Yeah. Let's see, so I'm five foot four, right? And this is, <laughs> uh, so six five down here in the uh, saloon. Look what we're missing right here. Stove. How could they have not put a stove right there? We've got little spotlights, little LED spotlights in here too, instead of the regular light bulbs. So I think the lighting in here is gonna be very sweet. I'm up in the forward cabin here, and this is a beast of another, another color. I don't know if that's the true phrase. Uh, tons of teak in here, giant V-berth up here, but look where it is. Look at the height of this thing. Uh, this is, oh gosh, almost four feet off the deck. They've got a step here, and then they've got uh, a chair here. Let me move that just a little bit. Uh, right here, a seat to sit in, which is kind of comfy. Nice little easy chair for somebody to put on your shoes, but you're kind of elevated. And I think underneath this V-berth up here, there must be a lot of mechanics for the air conditioning, reverse cycle, heating system, and all that. So uh, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to get into this berth because there's 400 pounds of sails in the way, but I will step up ah, into the seat right here. Look at a lot, a lot of nice, nice space up here. And we've got some a little bit of water damage around places into the, the varnish. This just needs to be sanded down. And we have an ensuite head for the V-berth here. So here's a forward head, nothing spectacular, but a lot of storage uh, in the typical storage areas behind the sink. And uh, a good flush with our long handle on it, we like that. And you can shower here too. You see the shower head will come out and there's a nice shower grate uh, below. We do have a drawer here and we have a hanging locker here that I can try and get into. There we go. Good size hanging locker. What's that uh, cabinet? Right? What's this thing over here? Ducting? Uh, that is part of the ducting. Is there a hose attached to it? No. Uh, it's probably been uh, taken off a relief. That's part of the AC heating system. Oh, okay. It's a cruise air uh, system and uh, I don't know what's happened to the hose itself, but uh, the vent is right up here beside me on the starboard side. Yep, lots of little spots of, of uh, some water damage that needs to be uh, perked up on the boat, but other than that, Rande, uh, I think we've pretty well covered this girl. What do you think? Yeah, no pillow and no horizontal though. I'm just sitting up here, I didn't get a pillow. I didn't get... Good night. All right, we'll see you. Lovely Lafitte 44, built in Taiwan, designed by Robert Perry, who has done a lot of offshore fast cruising boats. Interesting layout, owner's aft cabin and the giant, super giant uh, quarter berth, complete with a head en suite. The headroom in the boat was extraordinary in all cabins. The current owner uh, invested quite a bit of money into the boat. A lot to recommend this boat, and uh, I think it's time that we Give it a rating, what do you say? Yeah, it's about that time. It's a floater. If it floats, it gets a 10. They built 56 of these boats and they say numerous boats have gone around the world and there are a couple that have gone around not once, but twice. I think we gotta give it another 10 for going around the world so many times. And she's a solid Perry design. I'm gonna give it another six. And whoever ends up with this boat is going to be a happy camper. Thanks for watching, do come back and see us next time. If you like what you see, please hit the subscribe button. And if you want to be notified when the next one comes out,
please hit the alert bell. And that's not desperate at all. So we're having too good a time doing these things, so uh, you can hit the bell or not. Randy, how would I ever find out what's coming up next? Uh, you can follow us on Instagram here yeah. or Facebook here. We'll have little previews of what's coming up on our next episodes. A little bit early. That's pretty cool. Previews. You all join me. I'm going to Instagram right now and I'm going to find out what's coming up next week. Thank you very much. You know, Instagram's not a place. <laughs> <laughs>